Hi, I'm back. So that didn't work. It was like a whole hour of recording and I was on pause. I had to go somewhere. I broke my smoothie blender. Now I live off my smoothies. I don't eat anymore. I just drink, basically. That's what life after gastric bypass does. It changes everything. You don't need the food if you take your vitamins and you take the right extra stuff that goes with the new lifestyle. Most of what you get, you can get from the blender. So I cracked it, the bottom of it. How do you crack plastic? I had glass, a big, beautiful one. But the stress in my life is causing me to drop a lot of things. So I'm breaking things quite frequently. It's also, they say, there's like a reduced reflex from other complications within my, my nerves and my spine, whatever. So the pause didn't work. My going away and coming back, it uh, cut out when I closed the lid on the computer, I guess. So I have to do this in two seconds. But the good news is I've got my blender replaced. I could not go a day without that in the house because I have to drink my smoothies. <laughs> I have to have my meals. <laughs> I would die without a blender. So I had to go do that. So this is second segment. Um, this I should be able to finish off. So two segments is better than ten segments which I may still do down the road, and those ones will have little or no mistakes because I'll be able to go through each section slower and uh, do a, a better acting job. Right now I'm just reading. Okay, so the next scene is called First Day of First Aid Class. The following writing is what's written on the chalkboard by the time Clark walked in. Check. Scene. Call. For help. Care for victim. Unsafe conditions. One, spilled chemicals. Two, poisonous gas and steam, smoke or fire. Three, downed electrical lines. Four, confined spaces. And five, traffic. If these or other dangerous situations exist, stay a safe distance away. Leave dangerous situations to professionals. Call 911 or workplace emergency numbers and wait for help to arrive. If all of the above is clear, get or ask for first aid at the kit and continue helping the victim or victims. When calling for help, give one, the telephone number, two, the exact location, three, the caller's name, and four, what happened. Five, number and condition of victims, and six, what help is being given. Clark walks in. Class is already in session. The new lady in town teaching looks over at him with a smile and says, Nice of you to join us, Clark. Clark. Sorry I'm late. My mistake. I thought the class was being taught in the gym. First aid teacher. No, they are sitting up in there preparing for the high school reunion. Please take a seat, Clark. Certainly. Did I miss much? He asked, smiling. The first aid teacher. A little. Please write down what is on the chalkboard. Okay, class. We're now going to move on to checking a conscience victim. The first day of class is learning all about the things you will get to know firsthand over the next few days. Clark was thinking to himself how the teacher had nice lips. In quotations, it says kissable was the exact word that came to his mind. But he also knew a shot at that sure wasn't going to be today. So here he refocused his attention on what he was there to do to actually learn first aid. The first aid instructor. Okay, can anyone here show me what a triangular arm sling looks like? You can help yourself to the bandages in the box right there on the floor in front of all of you. The teacher went around the room a few minutes later to see if anyone had it figured out. Seeing that the students she had in her class were all new to first aid, she realized she would need to teach them about dealing with a conscious but injured person and show them that everything they needed to know before going home from their first day of class. Clark says, How did I do? Did I get it right? He proudly shows his injured arm securely in place with only one step missing. The teacher smiled and walked over and pinched the end and twisted it and tucked it inside the sling next to the injured arm. That's what you do when you don't have a safety pin. First aid teacher. 
There. Perfect. Not bad for your first time. But don't you worry. You'll be an expert by the time I'm done teaching the class. And Clark says, great. I look forward to joining the world of first aiders and proudly don the Red Cross symbol in my wallet. At the end of the first day, after the other students were done asking their questions, Clark walked toward her and asked her, So after you're done teaching this class, when or where do you think I might find the chance to see you again? First aid teacher, if you really want to know, I volunteered to be in the fall fair at the dump tank. The winners come back later that night and hand in their winning tickets for a kiss from me. Clark said, well, what a coincidence. I will be there helping my mother. Maybe if I can find the time, I will come try my luck at the dump tank. To make things fair, I will tell you now, I don't play baseball. The first aid teacher. It's all for charity anyway, so go ahead and give it your best shot. You never know, Clark. You might find yourself to be a winner. She smiled at him as she finished her paperwork and moved to clean up the day's mess on the floor with the dummy with the dump well, <laughs> with the dummies and bandages. Clark's last words before he left her were A guy can only hope. His eyes shined back at her. There was just something about this lady that he found intriguing and desired to know her more. He was looking forward to the challenge that lay before him. Next day in class, first aid teacher. Well, we have lots of work to do today, and unfortunately we are one student shy, so I will have to work with some of you. I hope that won't make any of you uncomfortable. Seeing that the teacher was fairly pretty, none of the guys seemed to have a problem with it. First aid teacher. First thing we are going to do today is learn how to deal with a choking victim. Does everyone already have their partners chosen? Clark put up his hand. Looks like I don't have one. Mine was the guy that is missing from class today. You don't mind if I'm the first one you work with, do you? Teacher was starting to wonder if Clark set her up for this. However, there was no time to point any fingers over the matter. She had a first aid class to teach. First aid teacher. Okay, I will play the choking victim. And you show me what you've learned from the homework you read through last night to prepare you for today. Clark. Okay. The book says if a person appears to be choking, we are to encourage them to keep coughing. So I would say, keep coughing, keep coughing. Can I help you? I know first aid. First aid teacher, you forgot a step. Clark thinking, hmm. Oh, um, yes, right. Telling someone to call 911. Hey, you. Go call 911. We have a choking victim here, unable to speak. First aid teacher now, with her hands around her neck, pretending to gag, without speech, trying to get air into her lungs, telling Clark he is on his own from here. Clark, happy about this next part, he knew it was time to move in physically and get close to the victim. He remembered the steps and said them out loud. Put your foot in between choking victim and put your arms around them like so. Nice and close, he slowly moved his arms around her. Then look for the belly button, take one fist and put it above the two finger marker and bring them both together and give the Heimlich maneuver like so. He was careful to be just right about the experience with the obviously wonderful, strong, but yet delicate lady now helpless between his arms. Once the unconscious victim was on the floor, he knew this is where the work begins. Clark, now with the first aid kit in hand, went by memory and opened the box and grabbed the gloves and put them on. He then put his head near the victim to feel and look for breathing for about five seconds. He then proceeded to do his first ever head tilt chin lift. How on earth, he thought, did he not take this training long before today? He looked, listened, and felt for breathing. In this particular victim's case, 
Victim was choking on something, so breathing has stopped and heart now slowing down. We looked into the victim's mouth but couldn't see the obstruction. The book then said, Clark says, it says to use a breathing barrier, or if you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and give mouth to mouth. I don't see a breathing barrier in this kit, so here it goes. He was smiling at the guys who were now paying attention to him and this next part with the teacher. Clark was definitely getting fresh with the boss. Uh, all the first aid kids there had breathing barriers. So Clark says, okay, first two rescue breaths. And he leaned down and softly but firmly laid his lips against hers. And the first thing he could taste was strawberries. How nice, he thought. He imitated breathing twice. After one cycle of checking for breathing and a pulse and another two breaths, the teacher stopped him because she could feel what he was thinking and then all eyes were on the two of them instead of their own first aiding first aid teacher. Okay, Clark, you've had your fun. You just couldn't wait till the fair and be challenged by the dunk tank, could ya? Clark was quick to add in front of the whole class. Early bird gets the worm. Now go find a partner with one of them and I will <clears throat> take the extra student. Getting up off the ground, she picked up the first aid kit and found the breathing apparatus from that kit and said, Ahem. Oh, and by the way, Clark, this is the breathing barrier and what it looks like. She took it out of its red bag and opened it for him and everyone in the class to see to be sure that none of the others tried to pull off that stunt on her like he just did. Fun is over, everyone. Get back to work on what you were doing. You all want to pass, don't you? She looks like Clark muttering to herself as she regrouped to work with one of the girls in the class this time. I'm not a worm for a bird to pick. The girl standing by her laughed at hearing her say that. The whole class. Yes, teacher. Clark started to wonder if maybe he was a bad influence for them for that part because now all the guys wanted a chance to work with her. At any rate, he thought to himself, it will be his first aider's first time to remember. End scene. Back at the house. On the table, you could see a little white and red card. Clark's mother walked into the room and saw this on the table. She saw the red cross, and that's when Clark walked into the room. You proud of me, Mom? I have now joined the World League of Lifesavers, Clark's mother. Yes, I'm impressed. Now you make me look bad for not having mine, Clark says. Don't feel bad, Mother. You have me to save you if anything bad should happen, Clark's mother. I know I do, Clark says. Listen. I've been thinking about Dad and the open-ended issue that lay before us. I tried rummaging through more of the legal documents about my adoption, but couldn't find anything about his family that would give me direct contact, so that leaves you. Didn't he give you all that information at some point? I mean, you wouldn't marry a man without having that kind of important information, would you? Clark's mother sighed. Oh, you're right, he did give me his family's contact info. But I haven't been in touch with them in years, with the exception of what happened to him when the lawyers informed his family. Uh, why are you asking? Clark, because I think we need to go to England. I mean, Mother, if Dad's inheritance is yours to have, then you have the right to collect it. Dad's been gone long enough now that you should be strong enough to deal with it. Clark's mother. Go to England? Clark. Yes. I would like to meet the family members I didn't know about that the two of you failed to talk about with me when I was growing up. I'm feeling cheated, like I only know part of who I am. Superman stuff aside, he said. Clark's mother. That kind of trip will be expensive. I'm not sure if right now is the best time to go. But I will track down the contact information. You are welcome to write to them. They do have a few pictures of you that your father sent to them through the years, so they know about you. Clark. If not now, then when, Mother? When will it be a good time? He understood she was still hurting over missing her husband, 
but that money would mean his mother could live comfortably for the rest of the days of her life. And he liked the idea of being able to own at least one cashmere sweater in his life. Clark's mother, a little snappy. Never, Clark. It will never be the right time to go see them without your father around. She started crying. Clark walked over to his mother and gave her a big hug. Well, then just let me start with contacting them for myself. Because this is something I need to do in order to deal with losing dad my own way. You'll be okay, mom. Everything will be okay. You'll see. Clark's mother. Yes, okay, Clark. I understand that we are both dealing with the grief in our own way and needing to know his family is your way of dealing with it. After dinner, I will track the information down and you can do what you want with it. I won't stand in your way. But just don't pressure me any more today about going to England. I need time to think, Clark said. Okay, mother, that sounds like a deal. They both sat down while dinner finished cooking and talked about more about Jonathan's childhood. His mother told him the good things she could remember. She realized her son was right. They should have spoken with him together years ago. But it's better late than never for Clark to learn what he needs to know to deal with his father being gone in the way that works best for him. And if going to England was the answer, his mother thought to herself, then maybe, just maybe, that's what they will have to do. And see. Fair day finally arrived. Clark's mother. Okay, Clark, this was your idea. So help me unload this stuff from the truck. Our table is right over here. Usually, I would only partake in the baking and hog contest. Your father loved trying to win that award <laughs> of growing the largest pig, a natural trash compactor, or compost service provider, he would say. Pigs eat everything. They are very useful on farms. Anyway, if you are right and I get enough support with this whole grow sunflowers thing and profits start rolling in, remind me to buy you a cashmere sweater. Like I've had to listen to you complain about. Never kidding. <laughs> Clark laughed. That's not going to change my mind about wanting to meet my grandparents. And if they so happen to want to spoil me a little, I won't stop them from showering me with a few gifts. But back to the business at hand. Just tell me where you want all this stuff. Clark's mother slowly but surely organized the way she wanted everything on display. This year she had little handouts and baby sunflowers growing for people to purchase and seeds people could purchase to support Clark's idea of growing sunflowers in the field and calling them Jonathan Spitz. Sunflowers grow in almost all weather conditions and the amount of land and fertile soil Jonathan's hard work left her. She agreed with Clark that sunflowers might actually pave the way to a debt-free future for the two of them. Comfortable enough to proceed to retire on and leave Clark a little inheritance instead of farm bills when she passes away. But first, there has to be a bit of community support to raise enough funds, the extra help and amount of product and work that it will take to be ready for spring to start growing them, and that's what our time at the fair was for this year. Clark's mother. Are you sure you want to enter that hog? I mean, your father is in here, and well, it's not the same, and you will have to keep checking in on him to make sure he's doing okay, and he waits his turn uh, while well, he waits his turn to be seen by the judge, judges, uh, Clark, um, come on, mom, dad never missed a year, try, try again, he always say, he came in close fourth one year, so he believed that he, if he just kept on taking care of his hog, his hog would take care of him, he believed one day his life of comfort would pay him back, and well, maybe with me home for the fair, maybe it will be this year. If Dad's hog has outlived many of the others, then theoretically it's only a matter of time before he is the biggest pig around and can't help but win. Besides, it's fun to participate at the fair when you can, don't you think? Clark's mother, okay, you're right, go have fun getting Wilfred comfortable for his long day ahead of him. He's not going to be seen until sometime in the middle of the day when we... Won't know who the winner is for hours after that in the evening, around the same time as the pie-eating contest. 
Clark. I'm going to take, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go take a walk around after I get Wilfred in place. You know, I've always wondered where dad came up with the name for the pig. He would never tell me when I asked. He just laughed and smiled. One day, son, one day, you'll know, just not today. Then he'd laugh to himself and walk away. Anyway, I want to go have a bit of fun before it gets busy at our booth and you need me here. Clark's mother, okay, Clark, you go. Have a good time. I'm pretty sure I can handle the table while you run off and play. Make sure you come back for those busy hours starting around two. As long as you're back here by then, everything will be okay. Clark, yes, mother. Now to get this big guy put in place and nicely situated in the shade for the day. I want to see Wilfred live as long as he can. Pigs that are stuck in the sun for events like this don't do as well. Clark's mother, you are right. Your father has spoiled that pig. Wilfred is accustomed to shade. He's not one to spend days lying around covered in mud lying in the sun. He's a rather odd pig. He's not like his counterparts. He doesn't care to get all dirty, and he's fussy about what he eats, too. Cost your dad more to feed him than all the other ones he's ever cared for. Guess it was something about the bond between the two of them. They say man's best friend is a dog, but in your father's case, I think it was this darn fella right here, Wilfred. Okay, Wilfred, you go win one for the boss, okay? Maybe this year will be your year to shine, Wilfred. She petted him and waved Clark off. After Clark settled Wilfred into place, he drove the truck to their designated spot in the parking lot and put his fair...